Hello and welcome to The Briefing Room. I'm Bill Fralick. This is our weekly roundup of some of the stories that have been making headlines across northern Michigan as we sit down with journalists who are covering those stories. With me this week at the table from the Petoskey News Review is Craig Courier. Craig, welcome back. Thanks, Bill. Good to be here. Good to have you in. Absolutely. What is your official title now at uh, the Petoskey News? Uh, assistant editor. Assistant We're editor. Covering um, daily duties, just kind of putting the paper out uh, on a daily basis, yeah. Well then, editor Jeremy McBain has been here several times, so I, I can say this comfortably then, as assistant editor, you really do most of the work. <laughs> and then Jeremy's kind of the figurehead of the operation. I, I, but I look at what he does and I, I feel, I say, in my head at least often, that I don't want to do the things that he does. So I'm happy doing, uh, doing what I do. Excellent. Well, let's talk about what's going on in, uh, in the Petoskey, Emmett County, Charlevoix County areas this week, uh, this past week or so. What are some of the big things that are happening in your communities right now up north? Well, we're, uh, we're, we're always, I, I think Jeremy, if he's been on the show and, and some of your watchers have been following it, that he, he's talked in the past about the Emmett County Board of Commission, which um, is actually kind of a flip from the, the historical way of the, our coverage area of Emmett and Charlevoix County, because it used to be Charlevoix County was the board that, that you wanted to follow and, and not let get too far away from you. But now, the, these last few months, a uh, couple years actually, it's been Emmett County, um, and it all started with a uh, $15 million bond proposal that the board approved in 2014. And then they, uh, without any voter approval, approval or input, and then they proceeded to um, go over budget with a number of the projects that were to be included in that, that uh, in the, to be uh, paid for by those bond proceeds. So um, here we are, fast forward two years later, and as the, the writing was really on the wall throughout, but um, they're, of the $15 million, they're five, mo they're five million over, over budget, um, creeping at toward or a little bit above 20 million for the total of these projects. And is this all the, the new um, EMS uh, ambulance project or does that include things like the Dark Sky Park as well? Yeah, the majority, the two main projects were uh, seven plus million dollar development at the Headlands International Dark Sky Park, which is north of Mackinac, or west of Mackinac City. And, uh, and then the development of an EMS, a county-run EMS operation, which would be uh, the building of three new ambulance stations and you know, purchasing vehicles and, and just you know, staff and all that stuff. So um, there was concern from the start about, whoa, $7 million uh, at a, a park that is essentially used to view the, the night sky, you know? Right. Um, where does that come in the list of priorities when we've got other issues going on throughout the county? Um, but they moved forward and uh, we continued to watch them and, and it's been quite an event playing out over and the last couple of years. it continues to go over budget at every update? Yeah, they, the, so I, I, as I said, the, the, the $15 million plan uh, recently, new documents show that they've they've um, tore through a lot of that money, and they're up toward uh, new projections are 20 million for all the projects. And I should say, the the EMS and the um, the the uh, Dark Sky Park development are a significant portion of it. But there are these other projects that are necessary maintenance ones, like a new roof at the county building and courthouse, uh, mm -hmm. right in downtown Petoskey. Uh, enhanced security measures there, you know, in in the in light of all the threats that are going on at, at you know municipal buildings all around Anywhere the country, else, right? um, you know, things like metal detectors that we don't even have. Uh, so, but what's happened is those projects, ha which were almost you know guaranteed as kind of part of this too, or sold as part of this too, are now clearly you know the b plan or the the second level of this plan and they're going to go toward these uh, the international dark sky park development the and the ems services so um we're seeing even some of those other projects get pushed off the the whole list altogether right. last time jeremy was in i think we talked too about how this is having an effect on what this fall's election is going to look like up in emmett county oh yeah I, I think, for, for, I don't know if it's unprecedented, but 
we are we're hosting a uh, county commissioner candidate forum debate. Um, uh, I don't have the date off the top of my head, but it's I think it's June 29th, so it's coming up this month. Um, but 15 candidates and maybe more because there's uh, a couple of independent candidates that have yet to file. So we are, uh, it's going to be kind of wild. I don't, I've never been a part of a candidate forum that's supposed that's to go 90 big. minutes and you've got 15, 15 people wanting to speak. So, uh, but it's interesting because uh, there's people engaged, which is neat, you know? Yeah. Uh, the other topic I guess we wanted to discuss is something that's going on in, uh, you said, Harbor Springs with a development there that appears to be stalled as, as well. Yeah, they, they, so we've talked about this before on your program. They have the, the Petoskey has the uh, infamous hole right there as you enter um, going up on 31 north toward, um, toward Mackinac City and the bridge. And, uh, and it stayed vacant. And, Different things have happened there, but but never uh, now it's just covered over in weed and grass, right. um, and no new signs about any development along there. If anybody's interested, it doesn't appear anything's moving forward quickly. Um, but uh, but yeah, across the across the bay in Harbor Springs, they have kind of a mini hole of their own. I don't know if they want to refer to it as that, but. Um, they were looking to build a 40-room hotel. It would have been one of the largest buildings in town there. Uh, underground parking. It sits kind of on a sloping hill, so there's you can really build the underground parking into it. And um, that was moving forward really fast. One of my first jobs when I arrived here a little more than two years ago was to cover City of Harbor Springs. And I must have written 10, 12 stories in the, in the fall of 2014 on... Now they're moving forward with this. This is happening. You know, construction should start as soon as the snow melts in the spring. And, uh, and I think as, as often happens with these things, financing fell apart okay. over the winter. And um, so now they're up against a deadline in mid-September uh, where all these uh, use, land use and, and zoning and whatever other approvals are expiring. And we, had a, we have a story in there this morning that indicates that uh, those probably will disappear, will expire, and they'll have to come back if they want to do anything in the future. So stay tuned there, but it doesn't sound like much is happening right. over there either. This, it, this may speak to a broader story, and we may not have the answers yet, but just for sake of our discussion, uh, it seems like this is happening a lot more often. Uh, and again, it happened with the other Petoskey Hole, uh, where we finally got a buyer, and then whatever those plans were fell through, and, and I don't know if that was a matter of financing or not, but <clears throat> is this something going on at the, the bank level uh, here in northern Michigan? Are there local banks that are just saying, you know what, we're not willing to take that risk, or what is the, the big picture reason for a lot of this happening? Because we've had, I mean, even in the Traverse City region, we've had projects uh, fall through as well, or uh, get stalled for one reason or another. Uh, Hotel Indigo is one that comes to mind right across from West Bay Beach. And I want to say that's, you know, it's now up and, mm -hmm. and ready to open, but it's been three years in the making, just delay after delay and financing issues uh, for a lot of folks. That three years seems kind of fast if you, if you compare it <laughs> compared to, to that. <laughs> yeah, well, and it could be longer. I don't even remember. Yeah. It's, all, it's all a blur because, like you said, we talk about these projects for so long. Um, but it does seem like we're just hearing about a lot more starts and stops and a lot more delays than I, I remember in the past. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, it's funny, my dad was uh, a, a journalist and columnist in the business news was his thing. And he, you know, money matters, that type of stuff was all up, up his alley. It's not really mine. Um, I, and I don't, I don't know exactly what the problems uh, are or were. But it would seem to make logical sense, or logical sense that uh, you know that people are still kind of slow to the the draw in terms of you know these big projects mm -hmm. that there really isn't much of a guarantee on on a return there. Um, I, I think the Petoskey one certainly. I mean, look at the look at the real estate that they've got. How could how could you well? 
hate to say that, but how could you fail there? It's it's got great uh, not great exposure. Yeah, and that's right. Now nobody, uh, but I think a lot of it too has to do with government, with local government um, helping the process along. And I know that uh, bo in both communities, to great to different to varying extents, the local governments were. Um, were slow and, and had an idea, a vision of what they wanted for that property. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't fit, then they were, um, you know, looking for reasons to... To say no. Yes, exactly. Make changes. So, um, yeah, that's a good point, It does take too. the government, you know, to kind of have a, a broader vision of, well, it's important to develop this place because it's just sitting there right now, you know, but... Lots of lots of confusion on on that, and, and it does. It strikes me too that it's also possible uh, that maybe developers are talking about their plans before they're actually finalized. Now, as opposed to uh, maybe waiting till all the eyes are dotted and the T's are crossed before going public with things, or maybe that's also a, a, a byproduct of going before your local units of government at those public meetings and now the press is paying attention mm -hmm. and people are paying attention. Probably could be a lot of factors. Well, and something too, the, uh, the Petoskey uh, city government has switched over in leadership, um, maybe it's almost been a year, six months at least, where the city manager, city manager. Rob Strabel from Charlevoix took the job up there. Yeah. And it looks like he, at least early indications were that he was interested in pushing a project forward. And I think, this fell apart, the, the most recent plan fell apart for a number of reasons and not just that, you know, it was, had come to a grind in the, in the city council process, but, or in the planning process, but um, it remains to be seen. I don't know, when we get, when we ever, whenever we get a tip in the newsroom, and I haven't been around that long, but it, this is one of those things that, that seems to come up often, is whenever we get a tip in the newsroom that, Hey, we heard there's a new plan going on for the the whole. We basically, you know, is where you'd think it would be somebody wanting to run at the assignment. It's more just, yeah, okay, it's going to be something that's some big plan, and then within a month we'll have it. Say, we'll have another story that says, wait, no, nope, they stopped, and right. and it's back to back to ground zero for it. So, what what is fun for you to cover in the Petoskey area? What do you enjoy doing, or even you can, we can even take this two ways. Uh, what do you enjoy doing there personally that maybe doesn't make it into the papers? I mean, I was up in, in your town a couple times the last uh, couple weeks with some time to kill. So I, for example, went into Kilwins and took the chocolate tour. And, uh, and this is just a fun thing to do up here that you know, we don't talk about, we don't hear about. Just part of a little slice of home. That's a good question. I, there's a couple things come to mind. I mean, I know that I love I love the lakes uh, and not just you know Lake Michigan I love uh, I love Walloon Lake I love Crooked Lake I love uh, um, even some of the smaller ones there's some in and around Harbor Springs and, and Petoskey there but <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of the things that I lived out in California before this and and uh, in fact, just the other day, I read there was a shark attack off of uh, off the coast in California. Not not that I actually thought you know I was going to get attacked by a shark, but it was a significant deterrent to stay out of the water because you know every time you hear about this. So so anyway, so when we came here, I, I said you know one of the greatest things about this is that there's no there's not going to be any sharks in this water, um, and and uh, so yeah, I mean I, I that's kind of a funny way of, of answering sure. your question, but. We do, we love, I love kayaking, um, just getting in the water, hanging around the water. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I live near uh, Wallen Lake Village, so we go down to the little beach they have there and can sit there and watch the sunset. Um, and, you know, I mean, I probably these are all things that everybody in Northern Michigan likes to do, but for somebody right. who still is a new resident, it's, uh, you know, it, it seems like almost every weekend or, you know, whenever you got free time, there's something new and different to do that, that is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Do you have different um, feature writers versus 
you know, hard news, news of the day, city council, cop, beat, writers, or does everybody do a little of everything? It's changed, um, you know, with with uh, downsizing staffs and, and all that kind of came out of 2007, 2008, the recession on until now. But um, sizes are, or staffs are definitely downsized as they are most places, many places. Uh, but I also find that fun because General assignment reporting was always my favorite. You never knew what you were going to do on a daily basis. You could have a plan, and then it just gets tossed up. It could be uh, in California often, not, uh, not too often, but what became a murder, covering a, a homicide or murder case yeah. um, or some sort of crime uh, or you know a court case where a, a verdict was coming in on a high-profile case or you know, city council making a big decision about, you know, a huge project that's coming on. So you had to know a little bit about everything, but you you never knew what it was going to be. And then you got to kind of immerse yourself in that subject for that day um, and learn everything you could about it. And it was a lot of fun. Well, we're going to take a quick time out here. When we come back with Craig Courier from the Petoskey News, we'll talk some, about some of the things that are going on online with PetoskeyNews.com and uh, see some of the new technology, new ways that technology is being used uh, here in Northern Michigan media. We'll be right back. Tonight we're going to explore the question, do we get the leaders we deserve? Is film influencing our culture or is it the other way around? What is it about humankind's fascination with the cosmos? It's the boundaries of personal freedom. Uh, in democratic societies like ours, you have to get people to do uh, what you want them to do, but they have to feel like they're doing it because they chose to do so. Welcome back to The Briefing Room. I'm Bill Fralick, and this is our roundup of some of the stories that are making headlines. This week at the table with us, Craig Currier from the Petoskey News Review, assistant editor there at Petoskey News. Again, thanks for coming in, Craig. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the non-print side of, of what you are doing, and that's uh, to be honest, one of my favorite parts about having you or Jeremy or even uh, Matt down here uh, to talk uh, with us because you guys just always seem to be doing something either new or innovative or experimental with uh, digital media uh, and, and just trying a lot of new things. We've talked before about uh, with Jeremy about this uh, 360 camera uh, feature that you guys are working on. I want to touch on that a little bit first uh, for those folks who haven't heard us talking about it before. Uh, tell us what what that is and how you're using it. Obviously, it's an online tool for your, for your readers. We found some ways that essentially it's a camera that, that captures uh, 360 view of, of wherever you put it around it. And then the viewer can go on to, the, to our website and with a scrolling bar around the, the left or right, essentially spin themselves in a circle and see all the things that that are around. We found events where it's worked and where it doesn't work. And the I guess I'll, the things where it does work is, uh, we had a recent, um, uh, our, our reporter in Charlevoix put the camera in a cage of uh, little um, baby chicks that had just been born. And so, you know, you kind of get in the, in this, I don't even know how big the cage was, but you get inside there with them and get to see what all they're doing and spin around and right. look at different ones. That was really neat. We sent it up on a drone, um, got a view from high above Petoskey, 360 view, so you can spin the camera around and look at downtown Petoskey. That really worked out well. Um, Are these, you know, like two minute long video clips? Is it theoretically somewhere you could just stick it on the corner of a building and? It could be a live feed forever, or yeah. Uh, do we know yet? We're keeping them. We're keeping them short. Um, you know, two minutes is is about it. Jeremy has the analytics better down about what what works and what doesn't in terms of length of a video. Um, I know I personally I watched these things and I looked at them for maybe 30, 45 seconds and I thought how neat and shared it on Facebook or wherever else, but uh, I, I wasn't committed for <laughs> five minutes for hours or on something. End. But it, was, it is kind of a neat, um, uh, I don't want to say gimmicky, but it's a, it's a cool um, feature to have. And definitely something that, that supplements, or, uh, supplements what we're doing online. 
Um, and then we were talking too about uh, the the graphic magazine and the Erasma app that we've yes. uh, we've employed in there. And it's a really interesting thing. It's a lot like um, you know Twitter or, or Facebook, where you where you decide to follow the Petoskey News Review on there. We have our, our account, and then you will put a little symbol with the Erasma. It's like a triangle, purple and gray triangle. We'll put a little symbol in the in the um, print edition, and. Our, our reporters and editor for the graphic magazine are working on videos constantly, and they'll link through this app videos on certain pages of the graphics. So you can just pull out your phone as you're doing it, hover the phone with the app open over the picture, and then the video pops right up. Yeah. So um, it's, it's a, really interesting. It's a really cool feature, and it's... Uh, the way I was thinking of it is kind of like that QR code, the black yeah. and white check box, uh, but it's it, the Erasma app, and the picture literally comes to life. That's you hold right. your phone over it, you see the uh, the chef standing at the table, and all of a sudden that black and white photo turns into color, and video starts playing through your phone out of it. Uh, and five years from now, you know, we watch this conversation, <laughs> and we'll all kind of laugh at ourselves because this. <laughs> That's nothing. But right now, this is brand new, and it's yeah. pretty cool. Um, and Jeremy also showed me, you, ha you had one, I assume it was the latest edition of the graphic that he showed me. You've got that one story with the Erasma app linked to it. And then I don't know if this was by design or because you guys were still experimenting, but he also said there's a second uh, piece in, that, in the graphic um, that's just kind of a hidden oh. hidden. Uh, feature this month where there's no Erasma link, but if you hold your phone over it'll the work. picture, it'll it'll uh, play automatically too, and it's some food article, and it's mm -hmm. got uh, the recipe for whatever the food is in the article will start playing in a video automatically if you hold your phone over it. Interesting. Um, so it's just, I mean, like I said, you guys are always seeming to do something innovative and out of the box, and I imagine that's got to keep it fun for you guys too. Absolutely. Well, and, and look, I mean, that's not that's that's Jeremy's um, vision, I guess, and that's what he he laid out for me when I first started working here was that he. I mean, you hear it a lot, but he wasn't afraid to fail with stuff. He does if people because you get a lot of ridicule online, you know. I mean, it's everybody does, but right. but especially media, and you know, you put something up on out there, and you, you're going to hear back a lot of. Uh, but he said, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried if, if people uh, hate this. We'll just stop doing it and we'll start doing something else. And so that's what any opportunity he, he seems to explore it um, in depth, you know, set, make it a project and, and have a group of people report back to him within a couple of days, come up with something, how we can implement this and then try it. And that's happening weekly, you know. Um, and so a lot of the things probably aren't even getting out of, of uh, you know, the the development stage or the discussion uh, right. phase of it. But, um, but no, he's, he's really trying to drive it forward and it's hard because it's hard to monetize any of this stuff, but, but we're working on it. There's also the, uh, the more news, newsy connection or the, the news angle to this too is that you have the potential now to put video with whatever news stories you want uh, online. Uh, and I presume the same with the app if uh, people want to hover over a story picture and see a video sure. story about it too, uh, that again changes kind of the face of print journalism. Well, and we should, I should plug the new, we, we, re, we relaunched, we launched a redesigned website yesterday. And it has, it was having a little problem yesterday, so I'm hopeful everything's cleared up today, but it, it looks different than the old website. Um, it, I think it's, I feel like it's more user friendly, more prominently displays stories, makes it easier to find stuff that was going back a couple days, which we had a, uh, complaints about a lot from our readers that, hey, once stuff moves off the main front of the site, then, you know, we don't know where to go to find it. So we got more stories linked down the side, uh, videos, more videos and photos more prominently placed on the website. So, um, it's just kind of keep pushing forward and see yeah. what happens next. Do you think, and I don't know if this has come up in a staff discussion or just your personal take on it, but 
Is this um, a byproduct of, of the fact that we're on this 24-hour news cycle and or you know, not everybody's home for the 5 o'clock news anymore or not everybody's staying awake till the 11 o'clock news anymore, that people will check online at petoskeynews.com at 9 o'clock in the morning when they get to work or they'll check it at 9 o'clock at night before they go to bed um, just to give different options for consumers. Oh, sure. Uh, and again, the, the, uh, the challenge is to monetize it, you know, I mean, but, but right now we've done things like remove our meter. We used to have a 10 story a week, 10 page right. view a week um, limit for, for our readers or viewers to come to the website. Now it's unlimited. Uh, that was Doug Caldwell, our publisher said, you know what, this is for now we gotta, we gotta go all open. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, people aren't, the intention span, unfortunately, is, is not what it, what it was. I still like watching the nightly news, but um, even then I DVR it and, and watch it, skip it through commercials and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, people, I mean, it's mostly people on their phones, people on their iPads, lying in bed or on the couch or whatever it might be, um, clicking off Facebook, stuff like that. So that's really what we're going for, but we but we still also have a print audience that we have to produce a, a publication for. Yeah, very exciting. All right, let's wrap this up with uh, what happens from this moment forward as you head back to Petoskey. What's the rest of the day look like for you and the staff? And uh, just, I don't know, kind of remind us what, what the schedule is for when you guys go to print every day. It's different than, than what I'm used to. I, I worked for a daily newspaper for seven years in California and we, we pub, uh, published in the morning or we, we distributed in the morning. So it was the papers on your doorstep by five to six o'clock in the morning. The news review is more of a, what's, I think what's becoming an antiquated, but it works in, in, uh, in certain markets and an evening, afternoon, evening paper. And so our deadlines are all kind of Different, different from what most people might think of a, a newspaper deadline. It's, you know, I get in there at 6, 6.30 in the morning. I'm working pretty much nonstop until 10. That's our, our hard deadline. Everything goes to the back to print. Um, and then we start immediately getting ahead on the next day's paper. It's an interesting mm -hmm. operation up there. We, we print the company shares communication zones, Char the Charlevoix Courier Weekly, Gaylord Herald Times, which publishes twice each week. We, publish, we print papers for uh, Boyne City, weekly Boyne City, a uh, number of tribal publications. Um, it's, a, it's a lot more than just a newspaper. There's, yeah. there's uh, commercial printing going on there too. So it's, um, it's an interesting operation. I, d I do like your schedule, and maybe it's just because it is different that I like it so much, but uh, you know, so often we will see in those morning, those daily morning papers, um, something to the effect of this information wasn't ready at press time, or uh, if it's a sports score you're wanting from, you know, high school basketball finals, it wasn't done yet at press time. Mm -hmm. um, so in the morning you're almost forced to go to radio or TV. Um, but with your schedule, obviously, if anything big happens overnight. You can still get it in the paper the next day. That's or if yeah. If anything you, happens after eight o'clock at night, it can still make it in the paper the next you day. You lose those eight or ten hours that you're you're off deadline and then sleeping, waking for waiting for the next day. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work. It's always fun to get the updates from yeah, you guys. Yeah, anytime. I like coming down. Appreciate it. Craig Kurger, our guest today from the Petoskey News Review, and I'm Bill Freilich. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on the Briefing Room.